Hey, new Gundam fans, do you want something that doesn't cost too much? Well, look no further to the entry grade new Gundam. How's it going guys? It is Plastic Disaster and today I'm going to do the review of the entry grade new Gundam. Now some of you might ask, well, do I regret buying the real grade new Gundam? Well, to be honest, no, I don't. It's worth every penny. But hey, we're not talking about the real grade. We're talking about the entry grade. If you guys seen my previous review, you know I've already talked about the entry grade RX-72 Gundam and the Strike Gundam. The new Gundam is the third one in the entry, pun not intended. Now, for those who don't know what the new Gundam is, first off, what's wrong with you? And second of all, it's Amor Ray's final mobile suit from the movie Mobile Suit Gundam Shara's Counter-Attack. So taking a look at the box side, we got the front shot of the new Gundam and behind it are the runners. Taking a look at this side of the box, we see the contents inside the box, how it's built, and the action poses. This side of the box, we have the front and rear shots of the new Gundam. So cracking over the box, we are greeted with two bags of big runners and a manual. Looking at the cover of the manual, we already saw a familiar front shot of the new Gundam and again, the runners. Checking the parts list, so it looks like we're going to be using all of them. Take a look at this part of the manual. Now, if you see my other entry grade reviews, you know that this is familiar, like what is a Gundam and what is Gunpla. Being on this side, we see the new Gundam from the anime. And right down here is an advertisement of other HG Gunpla. And right over here, it shows that you can put the fin funnels and the bazooka and you can put it on the entry grade and i forgot to say that you can give it the beam saber effect parts now if i want to get all three of these things and give it to the entry grade i have to buy the hg version bandai the fans and i love you but why you gotta do us dirty like that starting off with runner a1 it's gonna be a multicolor runner red yellow white and on camera it does look black but if you have it in your hands it's more like dark navy Runner A2 is another multicolor runner of yellow, dark navy, and white. Also, if you notice that if you put these together in the right spot, you can see that it could have been one gigantic runner. Runner B is going to be the white parts. C is going to be the dark gray parts. Now, notice how you see these little clean cut marks. It makes me wonder if we're going to get the other variants of the new Gundam. Runner D is going to be one teal parts for the eye. And finally, a marking sticker sheet. Now, this is the first one in the entry grade line that gets a marking sticker. It, it makes sense because without it, the new Gundam may look a little odd. So that about wraps up the unboxing. Now, knowing that this is an entry grade, I expect great things while being cheap at the same time. I'm going to put this kit together right now, and I'll see you guys right after. And here is the new Gundam all put together. As for building experience, it's still relatively easy built because it's an entry grade, but there are like some small pieces you want to deal with, like these little white bits on the backpack, this little black stripe right here, and the yellow pieces on the toes. What I'm trying to say is that they're trying to make this kit just slightly more challenging, which I don't mind at all. As for sea mines, of course, you're not going to really find much, except there is one hidden sea mine on the shoulders. On the thigh, you could say that this is a sea mine, but come on, it's a design. Moving on to marking stickers, this little one goes onto this part of the shoulder, while the big one goes onto the top of the shield. And speaking of accessories, well, we got the shield. And we got this little connector that is on a ball joint, and this tabs in onto this arm. Well, specifically for that arm. For those who prefer to have the shield on the underside of the arm, that's no big deal. But if you prefer onto the side of the arm, well, you're a bit out of luck unless you can find some way to modify it. Next up, you have its beam rifle. It is sandwiched together while you have this really dark blue piece that goes on top. Speaking of sandwiched together, yes, there is a seam line under the gun. Now, for the final accessory, if you really want to call that, is the beam saber. Now, like I mentioned earlier in the video, you have no beam saber effect parts. And just to get this out of the way, some of you may ask, well, what about the smaller beam saber handle on the left side of the arm? Well, I hate to break it to you, it is part of the design and it does not pop out. Moving on with articulation, the head is on a double ball joint. And for some reason on my copy, this little white piece right here wants to pop out. If you guys have the same issue, let me know in the comments down below. Ball joint on the shoulder. This moves down and up a little bit. 
The arm moves up this high, bicep swivel, bend at the elbow a little bit more than 90 degrees, and the wrist, it is on a ball joint, but it's deep in there, so all you get is a rotation. Uh, maybe a slight wiggle. Moving on to the torso, you do get a nice ab crunch. It can move back this far and get some side to side movement, and you get a waist swivel. Front skirt can move out this far. The side skirt is on a ball joint, but it's a little tight. And for back skirt, it is a fixed position. And since this is an entry grade, you do get a ball joint up here. So it does everything what a ball joint does. And you get a thigh swivel right below it. Double bend at the knee, and it reveals some nice piston details. As for the foot, it can move forward and backwards. It can rotate. It has like some sort of like flip flop joint. And as for a pivot, you get a pretty good one. As for the backpack, well, you get nothing. Overall, the articulation on this kit is actually pretty good. Maybe the bend on the elbow could be a little better, but due to design, I can let it slide. For size comparisons, here it is right next to his first Gundam, the standard size RX-782. And as you can see, the new Gundam is on the taller side. And to really emphasize how tall it is, here it is right next to the Zeta Gundam. Now, if you guys have been subscribed to me for a while, I do have the HGUC Sazabi, but uh, I don't really feel like bringing it out, and plus it's been customized. And finally, here it is right next to Optimus Prime and Godzilla. That's gonna be it for the size comparisons. Let's move on to my final thoughts. So for my final thoughts, overall, another great entry in the entry grade not intended well that is if you're okay if it doesn't have the funnels the bazooka and the beam saber effect parts but who knows maybe later on they're going to re-release this kit but as a uh, full package where it includes all the weapons or something kind of like what they did with the rx 782 gundam and since we got three kits so far in the entry grade line who should be in the fourth one i'm thinking either the unicorn gundam or maybe the zaku 2 only time will tell Alright, so I'm going to wrap up the review right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are new here want to see more content, be sure to subscribe. Questions, concerns, comment down below. Leave a like. I'll see you guys in the next video. So, Bandai, when are you going to do the uh, heavy weapon system version and the double fin funnel type, huh?